Our next guest is a New York Times bestselling author and actor you know from The Office. His new show, The Premise, is streaming now exclusively on FX on Hulu. Let's take a look. I know you want to make a difference, and maybe this isn't how you imagined it, but this is your chance to be a hero. This is your chance to make a difference, a big difference in a man's life. Ethan, this is your shot. And Ethan, you are not throwing away your shot. Please welcome back to the show, BJ Novak. Hey. Hi, buddy. How are you? Thanks for being here. <laughs> Great to see you, too. And to wave. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. Hello. Great to see you. I asked, uh, I asked Nathan this question, and I know you did some early stand-up days. You probably played in some pretty bad rooms as well, as far <laughs> as audiences. Um, I've definitely gotten the kind of silence that you get <laughs> in a room like this. Yeah. yeah. Where did you first do stand-up in New York? Um, the first, well, the first show I ever did was in LA. It was the Hollywood Youth Hostel. Okay. It was October 10th, 2001. Oh, so wow. So it wasn't a funny time. Right. And there weren't a lot of English speakers in the crowd. Gotcha. And the guy before me killed, he did an impression of Robert De Niro taking a dump. Oh, wow. Which transcends <laughs> language barriers. <laughs> and I should have taken that cue. And my very dry, ironic one-liners about the tragedy that had just happened um, did not did not play mm -hmm. uh, as I hoped. And the MC said sort of the most crushing thing to hear after your set. He said, takes a lot of courage to get up here. <laughs> um, yeah. So some, yeah, sometimes the, the compliments are, are more. More cutting than the, uh, yeah, yeah, the zingers. Uh, your face is the poster for your new show. Uh, Which is, is also kind of your face. It is. Yeah. And I, you, I'm not going to show a picture. Thank you. Of your show, but I'm pretty certain we almost have the exact same pose that I had when I first did this show. Like, Where's I think, like, just some version Where's, of... Which camera do I... Yeah, the right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very obnoxious look, but it's the, it's the only way, I guess, to convey this is kind of a comedy. Yep. Because just me like that, you know, it's dramatic and is kind of not it. But it's not, yeah, it, I don't love it. It's, um, did you, were you worried and have you seen yet being in the city? Has it been defaced yet? I'm dying for it to be defaced. Yeah. I have not, that's when you know you've made it, when your billboard is defaced. Mm -hmm. And I looked forward to being, it being defaced. But it's just, it's been left alone. Oh, that's, yeah. Um, but my, my plan is to someday star in something that is just a, really an experiment to be defaced. I have this vision of making a movie called The Invisible Trumpet. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the poster is me just like this. <laughs> like, can they resist? Yeah, no, it's, it would really be, I really envision it as an, an art contest. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'd see what people came up with. I wonder if for a certain level of graffiti artists, they might think, too easy. I'm yes. not even gonna, well, I'm not gonna even do this. I mean, yeah, it's sort of the New Yorker caption contest for, <laughs> you know, the uh, the defacer yeah. community. You're right, because what would they draw? Maybe someone would break break your heart with, with what's in my <laughs> Some mind. beautiful piece of art. Yeah, um, or make so, a statement. Uh, so this is a, an anthology series, five episodes. Yep. Um, it's great, what I love about it is that they are like short films. And I think- Well, I would say, Yes. They're like short movies because short films suck. That's a really, I like what you're doing here. I, um, I am fully on board with I this. I think short films, and I'm sure there's some beautiful ones out there, but short films tend to be elegant meditations on loss or something like that. Whereas a short movie, movies are too long, yep. in my opinion. Every movie is too long. They're like two hours and 15 minutes. And when you check your phone, it's really like six hours in a given evening to yep. watch a movie. And a TV show, you think of a TV show is shorter, but it's even longer because you're like 400 episodes behind everyone if you start the show. So to me, a short movie is really like, what if you had like a story that had some comedy and some drama and was about something interesting and good actors and, and you just made it in half an hour and you could watch an intense little movie and then the next one. So that's, that's why I wanted to do this the show. I uh, will say with all sincerity, I watched an episode because it was recommended to me. One of the episodes is called Butt Plug. Yeah. And it is incredibly dramatic. Yeah. And also very funny. But I, one of the things I noted is that when it was over, I could not remember the last time I had sort of like uninterrupted 
watched half an hour without being distracted because it did have like the arc of a film, yeah. which is really cool, and the stakes of a film, and yet at the same time, I did not feel like the, a huge chunk had been out of my day. That's exactly what I'm going for, and I do, I do love shows like Black Mirror and The Twilight Zone, but I hadn't, um, those aren't my voice. My voice is this very particular brand of comedy that you find funny or you don't, um, or you find dramatic or you don't, but it's, you know, it, it, the whole goal is what are these intense movies that like aren't weighed down with some you know subplot that kind of bloats it into 90 minutes. I like movies too, but yeah. too long. I mean, they're definitely not gonna, I think the movie uh, community is not gonna think this was a glowing review by either of us. Uh, no, or the short film <laughs> Right, no, they're gonna come after us hard. Yeah, forget Sundance for me now. Uh, you have a, a great cast, we saw Ben Platt, Trace Ellis Ross, but um, a really cool thing, you got to work with Ed Asner on, on maybe his last project that we're gonna get to see him in. Um, not my fault. Um, he was really wonderful yeah. and inspiring to work with. He was, you know, 90 years old. And he would rest between takes, which we asked a lot of him. It was quite a role, but he wanted to do it. But he would wake up and, um, you know, his assistant would gently say it's time and wake him up and, and we'd feel bad bringing him back to set. But once he started, he would not stop. He would do improv after improv and take after take. And it just shows you that someone at that level doing it that long, you just have to love it. It's only love that can make you do that. It's a really cool thing. Um, uh, finally, uh, The Office may be more popular now than it's ever been. I know. You Instagrammed Wild. this uh, the other day and said, uh, uh, what, were you, what was your phrasing, if you know? Uh, yeah, that, that sentence is all the I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. If you know, you know. I always yeah. have to like, sound it out <laughs> right. in my head. Uh, this was a drink that someone sent over to you. Yes, this is, I think, a seven and seven with seven maraschino cherries and sugar on the rim <laughs> blended if you can which was what my character ordered for Mindy Kaling's character on an Office episode that I forgot long ago because it was like 15 years ago, but is fresh in many people's minds. And this yeah. was just last night. Uh, That's a very cool thing, the, uh, the, the long tail of love for that show. Yeah, but the drink I don't recommend. <laughs> New episodes of The Premise are available Thursdays exclusively on FX on Hulu.